Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Madeline from Knitting House Square and today I have another knitting tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking you step by step through how to knit a pair of socks. But the fun and different thing about this video is we're going to be knitting them flat. So you heard that right? There is no knitting in the round required to make this pair of socks. <laughs> so let me show you what they actually look like when you knit them. So here is a pair of socks that I haven't seamed yet. So the way this is going to work is we're going to cast on along this top cuff edge. Then we're going to work our ribbon flat, work the leg of the sock, however long you'd like. You might want a longer leg of your sock, a shorter leg. It's up to you. We're going to do a German short row heel. Then we're going to knit the foot of the sock, work our decreases, and then bind off down here at the bottom. Then the last thing I'm going to take you through in this video is how to seam up the edge of the sock. That way you end up with a perfect little pair of socks. So I think this is a really fun way to get into knitting socks, especially if you've ever been nervous about knitting in the round, because this really takes you through a lot of the fundamental elements of sock knitting, just without that in the round component. So as always, this pattern is going to be linked down below. It's available in three different sizes. And if you have any questions about creating a different size or something like that, just let me know in the comments down below. Also in the description box below, you're going to find each one of the video breakpoints. That way, if you want to fast forward or rewind any specific part of the video, you can find all those times down below. Also, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button that's down below. That way you can stay up to date on all my future videos. This one is now, I think, the third one in my flat knitting series. So first, I did the ribbed beanie knit flat. I'll put a picture and a link up in the corner of the screen if you're curious about that video. I've also done the fingerless mittens knit flat. Those match that ribbed beanie. Same weight of yarn and same ribbing technique. And now lastly, we're working on some socks knit flat. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial and let's get started. The materials you need for this project include one tapestry needle, two stitch markers. Next up for the knitting needles, I recommend using a circular knitting needle for this project, even though it is knit flat. And the reason for this is that it makes it easier to divide the stitches for Kitchener stitch, and it can also be incredibly difficult to find straight knitting needles in such a small size. So if you've never knit socks before and aren't yet aware of what size you're going to typically knit socks on, so what your gauge typically is, I would recommend starting with a US1 circular knitting needle. And the one I have here has about a 32 inch cord. Lastly, for the yarn, you're going to need between 200 and 400 yards of a fingering weight sock yarn. So to start, the first thing we need to do is we need to cast on our stitches. So because they are socks, we want the top edge to be a stretchier cast on method. For this reason, I'd recommend using either the long tail cast on or the German twisted cast on. If you aren't familiar with either of these methods, I do have a video that compares them that I'll link up above. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the long tail cast on. Now, if you already are familiar with the different cast on methods, just reference the pattern down below for the specific size you're knitting and cast on that number of stitches. So the first step for the long tail cast on is we need to unwind a portion of yarn. So I'm going to unwind about five feet. And the reason I use such a long length is because I like to use this tail for two things. First is we use the tail as part of the cast on, so we need it for that. And then I also like to have a little bit extra to use in case I want to use this tail to seam down the outer edge when we're all done the socks. Because these socks are knit flat, of course we have to create a pretty long seam. So I wound off about five feet and now I'm just pinching the yarn in that location. So now I'm going to place my yarn so that the working yarn is furthest away from me. The ball of yarn is called the working yarn. And then the tail, or the yarn we just wound off, is closest to me. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a slip knot right here in this location. So I'm going to take my left hand and I'm going to put it right behind that strand of yarn. Now I can let go of where I'm pinching it. I'm going to grab onto that strand with my bottom three fingers. And now I kind of like to angle my hand a little bit too because it makes it a little easier. So now it's kind of like a 45 degree angle there. Now I'm going to take this working yarn and I'm going to go back behind my finger then come towards myself around the front, go back behind towards myself around the front again. Now go back behind and then grab onto that strand with your bottom three fingers as well. So now it's basically like you have two and a half full wraps around your pointer finger. 
So now we're gonna rearrange these loops to create our slip knot. So I'm gonna take the second loop and move it up over the first loop. I'm gonna take the new second loop, move it up over that first loop. And now I'm gonna take this new second loop again and I'm gonna slide it off my pointer finger. So now we've created a slip knot. So now holding the slip knot so that the tail is closest to me still and the working yarn is furthest away, I'm just gonna slide the slip knot right on to my knitting needle and I'm gonna pull on the tail to tighten. So that was our slip knot and the slip knot does count as our first stitch. So I like to hold this in place with the pointer finger of my right hand as I'm gonna begin working the cast on just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. So now we're gonna be casting on a total of 74 stitches. So we already have one, so we need another 73. And for the long tail cast on, the way it works is again, I'm gonna take my left hand and I'm gonna put it behind both of these strands of yarn. Now I'm gonna grab onto both of the strands with my bottom three fingers. And I'm gonna use my pointer finger and I'm gonna push away from me on the working yarn. I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna to push towards myself on the tail. So again, I'm grabbing it with my left hand, holding it with bottom three fingers, pushing away from myself on my working yarn. You can tell by which one moves. <laughs> pushing away on my working yarn with my pointer finger, towards myself on my tail with my thumb. Now I need to angle my palm up towards the ceiling. So this should be exactly what you're seeing if you look down at your hand right now. So the way the long tail cast on moves is we're gonna move the knitting needle and then we're gonna release with our left thumb. So first we move the knitting needle towards ourself, down the front, up the center of the thumb, back towards the pointer finger, down the center of the pointer finger so we catch that one strand. And now we're gonna bring that one strand down the center of the thumb. Now we release with the thumb push back on the tail with the thumb. So that tightens the stitch onto the knitting needle. And you wanna pull it snug, but you don't wanna pull it too tight. So now when my thumb is angled up towards the ceiling again, I can do that exact same thing. So I'm gonna to go towards myself, down the front, come back up the center of my thumb, go back towards my pointer finger, go down the center of my pointer finger so I catch that strand, then I'm gonna take that strand and bring it down through the center of my thumb, release with my thumb, push back on the tail with my thumb. So now I have a total of three cast on. So if I ever lost my place and I needed to get back into it, I'm just gonna grab onto both strands with my left hand, push away on my working yarn with my pointer finger, towards myself with my thumb, angle my palm up towards the ceiling. And now I'm ready to begin again. So towards myself, down the front, up the center of my thumb, back towards my pointer finger, grab onto that pointer finger strand, down the center of my thumb, release with my thumb, push back on the tail with my thumb. So now I'll do it a few times without me talking <laughs> so you can follow along. So now I'm gonna continue all the way across this edge. And for the size I'm knitting, I need to cast on a total of 74 stitches. So now that I've finished casting on all the stitches, what I'll do is I'll just take that extra yarn tail that I have, and I'm just gonna tie it into a little bow on the side of my work. That way it keeps it out of the way so I don't accidentally start knitting with it when it doesn't become tangled with my working yarn. So now I'm gonna turn my work, and here I'm ready to begin the ribbing repeat. So first, the first row is purl one, knit one, and repeat that all the way across until two stitches remain, then purl the final two. So again, it's purl one, so purl the first stitch, yarn to the back, knit the next stitch. 
yarn front, purl one, yarn back, knit one. Continue all the way across until two stitches remain and then just purl those final two. So now that I finished that first ribbing repeat row, I'm gonna turn my work and I'm gonna work the second repeat row. So this one is knit the first two stitches, then work a repeat of purl one, knit one, all the way across. So knit the first stitch, knit the second stitch, then work purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, all the way across. I'm gonna knit one, knit the second, yarn front, purl one, yarn back, knit one, yarn front, purl one, yarn back, knit one. And I'm gonna keep on repeating that purl one, knit one, repeat all the way across. So now after row two, again, I'm ready to turn my work. So now that I've shown you the repeat rows one and repeat row two, all I do is I'm gonna continue repeating them over and over again until this total cuff length measures two inches. So I measure from the bottom of my cast on to the bottom of my knitting needle, and when that length is two inches, I'm all ready for the next step. So an easy way to check too, if you ever forget where you are in your work, if you use the same cast on as me, so if you use the long tail cast on or the German twisted cast on, when your tail is over here towards the right and you're about to start working across, you'll be working a row one. If your tail is over here towards the left and you're about to start working across, you're working a row two. So that's an easy little way to remember which row you're supposed to be working when you're on different sides of the work. So now again, I'm gonna continue working until this portion measures two inches and then I'll come back and show you the next step. So now I just finished those two inches and I'm probably actually a little bit short of two inches there. But the next thing the pattern notes is that you wanna make sure you finish after row one. So if you just completed a row one and you already have your two inches, you're all set up to begin the next part of the pattern. But I actually just finished a row two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn my work and I'm gonna work row one one more time. So now I've just finished that row one of the ribbing pattern. So now I'm all ready to begin the next part of the pattern. So what I'm actually looking at right now, this is kind of like the front side of my fabric. So this is gonna be the outside of the sock. And I know I'm on the outside of the sock because over here on the outer edge, I start with knit stitches. And then on the opposite edge, I end with a knit stitch. So whenever I'm on the rows that begin and end with knit stitches, that's the front side of my fabric. Whenever I'm on the opposite side, so on the opposite side, they begin and end with purl stitches, that's the inside of my sock. So the way these next two rows work is whenever you're on the outside of your sock, the rows that begin with knit stitches here in this case, we're knitting across our work, then we're gonna turn and we're gonna purl all the way across. Then we turn again, knit, purl, knit, purl, over and over again. So this portion of the pattern really is quite simple. So you just wanna make sure that you are on the correct side when you begin this. That's why it was so important to finish after row one and I know I have because this next row I'm about to work starts with a knit stitch here. So first I'm just gonna knit all the way across this row. Now that I finished knitting all the way across, I'm gonna turn my work and purl all the way across this row. Okay, so now I've purled across. So now again, I would turn my work, and now we're just gonna keep on alternating rows between knit and purl, knit and purl. And you can keep on doing this for whatever length you'd like your cuff to be. So when deciding how long of a sock length or how long of a stockinette portion you wanna knit, it's important to consider all the different components of the sock leg. So first up here at the top, we have our ribbing. So this is what we just knit about two inches. Then we have this stockinette portion, and then lastly, we have the heel. So this is the part if you're actually wearing the sock, right? So if we look at it from the side, this is gonna be like the base of your heel. Then we go up to here, 
This is gonna be the stockinette portion that we're knitting right now, and then we have the ribbing. So when you're choosing how long of a total sock leg you wanna knit, first you wanna subtract out however much ribbing you already have, because we already knit that. Then you wanna subtract out just about an inch and a half for the heel turn. Then whatever's left over from the length you'd like this total length to be is how long you should knit this stockinette portion. So with this example right here, I have about an inch and a half of ribbing, then about two inches of stockinette, then an inch and a half of heel turn. So this actually is a relatively smaller um, kind of like cuff length for knitted socks. A lot of times people prefer longer ones than this. So just a helpful hint when you're determining how long stockinette to knit. So now I've knit up to the length that I'd like for my cuff and I'm ready to put in the heel. So over here is the sock that I'm currently working on as well and you can see that this one already has the heel in. So the way the heel is gonna work is we're gonna start on a right side row. So we're gonna start on a row you would begin knitting across and we're gonna work the heel just on the first half of the stitches here. And we're basically gonna be working back and forth, decreasing the amount of stitches we work back and forth between. Then we're gonna catch all the stitches. And then again, we're gonna work back and forth, increasing the number of stitches. So it seems really complicated, but actually knitting heels can be really easy. So I'm gonna take you through it step-by-step step right now. So again, as I just mentioned, I'm on the right side of my work, so I'm about to start a knit row. And on this row, I'm just gonna knit across the first half of my stitches. So for me, that's 37 stitches. Okay, now I have those 37 stitches, and here I'm gonna turn my work. So as you can see, we stopped knitting in the middle of the row, and now we're gonna work in the opposite direction. So we're just working back and forth on this first half of the stitches. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create what's called a double stitch. So when you make a double stitch on the wrong side of your work, the way you do it is you're gonna pass the first stitch from the left to right knitting needle. Then you're gonna take your working yarn and you're gonna pull it up over the top, back behind and in between the two knitting needles. So you can see how I just turned that single stitch into having two loops there. So let me show that one more time. So to make a double stitch on the purl side, I'm just gonna slip my first stitch from my left to right knitting needle. Then I'm gonna take my working yarn, pull it up, then go back behind and bring my yarn to the front again. So I turn that single stitch into a double stitch. Now here, I'm gonna purl all the way across until one stitch remains. Now I'm gonna stop before I work that final stitch and I'm gonna turn my work. Now on this side of my work, I again need to make a double stitch. So to do this on the knit side or the right side of my work, I'm gonna bring my yarn in between my two knitting needles first, and I'm gonna slip my first stitch from my left to right knitting needle. And now to create a double stitch, I'm just gonna pull my working yarn up over to the back of my work. So you can see we just turned that single into a double there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knit across until one stitch before where that previous double loop is. So if you're working the same size as me, I'm gonna knit 34 stitches. So now I'm gonna knit that final stitch that's before the double stitch. I'm gonna leave the double stitch over here on my left knitting needle, and now I'm just gonna turn my work. Now I need to create a new double stitch. So again, the same way as I did last time, I'm gonna slip my knitting needle from my, slip the stitch from my left to right knitting needle, pull the yarn up over the top, back behind and in between the two knitting needles to the front again. So now I have two double stitches next to each other. So now what I'm gonna do on this side is I'm gonna purl across until one stitch before this other double stitch. So if you're counting, it's 33 stitches this time. We're just going down by one stitch each time. So now I'm gonna purl that last stitch before the double stitch on this side. And now I'm gonna turn my work. Now again on this side, I'm gonna make a double stitch. So I'm gonna bring my yarn in between my two knitting needles to the front, slip the first stitch from my left to right knitting needle, tug that working yarn up over to the back to create a double stitch. 
So now that I've shown you a few rows here, you can probably guess what the repeat is. So how the repeat works is first, when you have the front side of your work facing up, you're gonna start by making a double stitch, then you're gonna knit all the way across, all the way up until you reach the double stitches. You're gonna turn your work, then on the wrong side of your work, you're gonna start by making a double stitch, and then you're gonna purl all the way across up until you reach where those double stitches are. So basically what we're doing each row is we're adding another double stitch to either side, and we're decreasing the number of stitches in the center. So we're just gonna keep on having more and more and more and more double stitches. And eventually what you wanna end up with is you're gonna have 12 double stitches over here on the left-hand side, 13 plain stitches in the center, and 11 double stitches over here on the right-hand side. So once you've reached that point, I'm gonna come back and show you the next step. So I've just finished that purl across row that had me end up with 12 double stitches over here on the one side, 13 regular stitches in the center, and then 11 double stitches over here. So now when I turn my work, the next thing I'm gonna do is first, I'm gonna create a double stitch. So now that I've created this double stitch, I should have 12, 12 stitches in the center and then 12 double stitches on the other side. And now I'm gonna knit across the rest of this row. So first I'm just gonna, when you knit across these front stitches, you just do this normally, or sorry, the stitches at the base of the heel. Now before I begin knitting the double stitches, I'm gonna place one stitch marker. Now I'm gonna knit across the double stitches and as I do, I'm gonna work each one basically as a knit two together. So you just wanna knit both of the loops at one time. So for example, here with this first double stitch, I'm just gonna put my knitting needle into both of those loops as if to knit at one time, wrap my yarn around and pull through. So do that exact same thing for all of these double stitches. Now that I've worked across all those double stitches, I'm just gonna continue knitting all the way across the rest of this row. Now I'm gonna turn my work, and here on this side of the work, I'm gonna purl all the way across to the stitch marker pass the stitch marker, then purl all those center heel stitches, and I'm gonna stop right before I get to those double stitches on this side. So now I'm right before I get to those double stitches, and here I'm gonna place another stitch marker, and now I'm gonna purl each one of these double stitches together. So basically I'm purling the two loops together. So here for this first one, Put my knitting needle purlwise into both of those loops. Wrap my yarn around, push through. Then I'm gonna purl that final stitch. So now I'm gonna turn my work again. And here you can already see the heel starting to form. So what we're gonna do on the second half of the heel is again, we're just gonna be working on these first half of the stitches again, but this time we're gonna knit over to the second stitch marker, work one stitch past it, make a double stitch. Then we're gonna work back across to one stitch past this stitch marker, make a double stitch. Keep on going back and forth, and this time we're gonna be expanding outwards. So if you think about the way you knit a heel, it's basically like, Let's say these are the number of stitches in our heel. First, we go inwards. So we're creating like that inward portion of the heel. Which if I look at this sock that I knit before, right? We're going inwards up to this point. Then we knit our rows across that we just did. And now we're gonna go outwards again. So we're gonna start going like this where we make the rows wider and wider. And this portion in here are those 12 stitches at the center portion of our heel. So let me show you the first few repeats. So first, I'm gonna knit to one stitch past my second stitch marker. So I slip my stitch marker, then I'm gonna knit one more, 
turn my work. And now I'm gonna make a double stitch. So I'm gonna pass that stitch from my left to right knitting needle, pull the working yarn up over, and then in between the two knitting needles back to the front. Now I can actually take out the stitch marker because all I needed it for was where to create that first double stitch. So now I'm gonna purl across to one stitch past the other stitch marker. So now I'm gonna pass the stitch marker, then purl one. And here I'm gonna turn my work and I'm gonna create a double stitch. So I bring my yarn in between my two knitting needles to the front, slip one, then pull that working yarn up over the knitting needle. Now again, I can take off this stitch marker. So now we need to begin expanding. So to begin expanding, I'm gonna knit all the way over to where my double stitch is, knit my double stitch together, then knit one more stitch. So here's my double stitch. I'm gonna knit it. Then I'm gonna knit one more stitch. Turn my work. Now I'm gonna create a new double stitch. Pull my yarn up over, then in between. Now I'm gonna purl all the way over to where my double stitch is. Purl that together and then purl one more. So here's my double stitch. I'm gonna purl it together, then purl one, turn my work, and create a double stitch. So what we just did on those two rows is we moved our double stitch out one on either side. And as I continue repeating these repeat rows, my double stitch is gonna keep on moving further and further outwards. And we're gonna be expanding the number of stitches we're knitting back and forth. So now I'm gonna continue repeating those two rows over and over again. Again, each time moving my double stitch out one more stitch as I go along. And I'll know I've completed the full heel once my two double stitches are 34 stitches apart. So I should have when I'm all done, I'll have my one edge stitch, which is just this one over here. This one isn't actually part of the heel. This is just for seaming later on. Then I'll have a double stitch. I'll have 34 stitches in the center. And then I'll have another double stitch over here on the outer side, other side. So a total of 36 stitches here for my size, plus one, 37 stitches. So now I'm gonna continue repeating those rows again, moving my double stitches out each time. So now I'm just about to finish up with my last double stitch and I wanted to show you what my work looked like. So for my final double stitch, I have one stitch over here on my right hand knitting needle. I'm gonna make this double stitch. And now my work is set up where I have one stitch, a double stitch, 34 stitches in the middle, my second double stitch, and then the rest of my sock over here. So now I'm all done with the heel. So all I'm gonna do is as I work across this next row, I'm gonna keep on knitting right across, knit my double stitch together and keep on going all the way over. Turn my work and purl all the way across, purl this double stitch together and then keep on purling all the way to this end. And then I can just keep on going back and forth, row after row for the full length of the foot of my sock. So for the foot of a sock, the length that you wanna get depends on the shoe size that you are. And I'll leave a really handy chart down below. There are a bunch of them you can find online for like what sock length you need for different size feet. So when you measure your sock, you wanna kind of lay it down flat and fold the heel in half here so that it looks like the profile of the sock. And when you do that, you're gonna measure from the back of the heel, so kind of like what portion goes up the side of your leg, you wanna measure from back here, all the way up to the bottom of the knitting needle. And you wanna make sure to leave room for the toe decreases. So typically the toe decreases take up about one and a half inches. So you wanna go one and a half inches shorter than whatever length you need for your shoe size. So for example, if I needed, let's say, 
like eight inches long was the total length of my sock that I needed. I'm just gonna take off one and a half inches here. So I would need to do six and a half inches if I measured from the side of my heel when I put my sock in like the correct position here with the right angle. From the back of here to the bottom of my knitting needle, when that is six and a half inches, I'm ready for those toe decreases. And that's gonna be the next part of the video. Now next up, I'm gonna be showing you how the toe decreases work. So here I'm gonna be showing you an example of the toe decrease row. So the way this row works is we're gonna be working a total of four decreases. We have one towards the beginning of the row, two in the center, and then one towards the end. And these decreases are gonna be slip slip knits or knit two togethers. So to begin, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knit the first two stitches. Now next up, I'm working a decrease called a slip slip knit. So how you work this is you're gonna slip the first stitch as if to knit from your left to right knitting needle. So you wanna twist it. Slip another stitch from your left to right knitting needle, twisting it. Now I'm gonna pass them both back over to my left hand knitting needle. And now I'm gonna knit those two together through the back loop. And I'll show another example later on in this row again when we work the second one. Now for the size I'm knitting on this first decrease row, I'm gonna knit a total of 30 stitches, but that number is gonna change depending on what decrease row you're on and what size you're knitting. Next up, I'm gonna work a decrease called a knit two together. So here I'm gonna take my right knitting needle point and I'm gonna put it into the next two stitches going into the base from the left to the right. So I'm essentially working a knit stitch just with two loops now instead of one. Wrap my yarn around, push through. Now I'm gonna knit two. And next up, I'm gonna work the slip slip knit again. So how this has worked to show again is I'm gonna slip the first stitch on my left knitting needle, twisting it. So I'm basically almost doing a knit stitch, just not actually wrapping the yarn around, just slipping it from one needle to the other. Gonna do that exact same thing for the next stitch on the left hand knitting needle. Now I'm gonna pass them both back over to my left knitting needle. And now I'm gonna knit them together through the back loop. So I'm gonna take my right knitting needle into the base of both of them behind my left knitting needle, wrap my yarn around, pull through. Now again, for my size in this row, I'm gonna knit 30. And now here again, I'm gonna work a knit two together. So right knitting needle into the base of both of those stitches, wrap my yarn around, pull through, then knit the final two stitches. So that is how you work a decrease round when knitting socks flat. Now in the pattern down below, it'll give you a full description for when to work these decrease rounds and how many stitches you wanna end up at the end. Now I'm a bit further into my toe decreases. And at this point, I have to do decreases on the purl side of my work as well. So I just wanna show you the, real quick the two stitches that you need. So the two stitches are gonna be a purl two together and a purl two together through the back loop. So first here, I'm at the beginning of my purl side row. So the first one I wanna show you is a purl two together. So to work this, I'm just gonna take my right knitting needle point into the base of the next two stitches on my left knitting needle, wrap my yarn around and push through. So we just purled two stitches into one stitch. Now next up, I'm gonna purl over to where I need to do the purl two together through the back loop. So I'm gonna be a bit tricky to show the purl two together through the back loop, but what I wanna do is I wanna pick up the next two stitches on my left knitting needle with my right knitting needle point, and I wanna start at the second stitch and then do the first stitch. And I'm picking each one of them up from the back of my work. So this is the through the back loop part. So I'm gonna thread my right knitting needle into the base of both of those stitches 
Again, I wanna start at the second one. So you can see I just picked up that second one. Then I'm gonna go through the first one, wrap my yarn around and push it through. So that was a purl two together through the back loop. So let me show that one more time. So again, I'm gonna take my right knitting needle point, go into the base of that second stitch on the back side, going from left to right. Then I'm also gonna go through that first stitch from left to right, wrap my yarn around, and then I wanna push it through that opening. So that is a purl two together through the back loop. So those are the two stitches that you need for the purl side decrease rows. Now I'm gonna continue working all my different decrease rows until I'm all ready to begin the Kitchener stitch and I'll come back and I'll show you that step. So now it is time to work the Kitchener stitch across the top of the toe. So the row I just finished, I worked across the front side of my work from right to left, and now I'm not gonna turn my work or anything. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide all my work over to the cord of my circular knitting needle. Now I'm gonna count in to the center point. Once I find that center point, I'm gonna stretch out my work there and pinch the cord. Then I'm gonna bend the cord in half and pull on it. So then this way, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna end up with half my stitches on one knitting needle and half my stitches on the second knitting needle. Now outside facing me, I still have the front side of my sock, so I'm just looking at all these knit stitches here. So you want flat, you don't want this bumpy side out. And you want your working yarn to be coming out the knitting needle that's furthest away from you. So just to recap here, I have my knitting needle points over towards the right, my working yarn is coming out my back knitting needle or the one furthest away from me, and I have half my stitches on either knitting needle. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to cut our yarn to be in the Kitchener stitch across this top seam. So because we can't really use this one for seaming because we're gonna end up in the corner that doesn't need to be seamed over here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave myself about, I always like to leave a little extra, so I'm gonna use about a foot here and then cut my yarn. Now I need my tapestry needle. And if you're curious about what size tapestry needle to use, I did just put out a video all about tapestry needles and the different sizes. So the one I'm using today is a clover, knit or clover tapestry needle. This is the smallest size in the set and I'll be sure to link this one down below. So I'm gonna thread my tapestry needle with my tail. And now for Kitchener stitch, there's two setup movements and then four movements in the repeat. So first to set up, I'm gonna take my tapestry needle through the first stitch on my front knitting needle and the front one is the one that's closest to me. And I'm gonna go purl wise. Just slide the yarn through. Now I'm gonna go through the first stitch on my back knitting needle knit wise. And for each of these, notice I'm going underneath the other knitting needle here so that I don't end up with extra loops going over the knitting needles. So those are my two setup movements. And now I have the four repeats. So first, I'm gonna go through the first stitch on my front knitting needle, knit wise. And I'm gonna slide that stitch off my front knitting needle. Now I'm gonna go through the new first stitch on my front knitting needle, purl wise. So as if to purl, leave that one on my knitting needle. Now I'm gonna to go to the first stitch on my back knitting needle, slip the tapestry needle through purl wise. I'm gonna slide that stitch off my back knitting needle. And now I'm gonna go through the new first stitch on the back knitting needle as if to knit. leave that stitch on the knitting needle. So that's the four stitch repeat. So let me show it one more time. I'm gonna go through the first stitch on my front knitting needle as if to knit. 
slide that stitch off my front knitting needle, go through the new first stitch on my front knitting needle as if to purl, leave that stitch on the front knitting needle, I'm going to go through the first stitch on the back knitting needle as if to purl, slip that stitch off the back knitting needle, now I'm going to go through the new first stitch on my front knitting needle, knit wise, leave that one on the back knitting needle. So now I'm going to continue across repeating that over and over again. And eventually you'll end up with where you can't repeat the full repeat down here at the end. So here you just want to do as many of the steps as you can. So for example, I end up with just one stitch on my back knitting needle. So here, I'm just going to slip that one off and thread the yarn through that one. Now I weave this tail to the inside of my work, so just pick any spot over here in the corner where it'll blend in a bit. And now later on I'll weave this all the way into my work so that it becomes invisible. Now the last step we have to do is seaming. So now the final step is to seam the two sides together. So I start with my cast on tail up here at the top, and this is going to be what I use to seam the two sides together. Now if you don't have a tail that is long enough to seam the two sides, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to join a piece of yarn up here right at the inner edge of either one of the sides. Leave about eight inches on one side of the tail, and then have a longer thread to seam with here. And then later on you can weave in the 8 inch tail that's left over, and of course we're going to seam with the other side. So when I place my sock to be in seaming, I'm going to have the cuff closest to me and the toe furthest away, and the seam up here is all the way on the top. So now when I'm seaming, the first thing I do is I look for the columns that I'm going to seam between. So first on this side, if I stretch out my work, I can see that I kind of have this column of knit stitches going all the way up here on the left hand side. And then when I stretch it, I can see that column of purl stitches that's in between. So what I'm going to want to pick up on this side is I'm going to want to go in past where those knit stitches are. So the knit stitches are those ones that kind of look like little hearts or the V shape right there. Then we can see the purl bumps. So I want to go over here to where the purl bumps are and pick up the leftmost bar here. So it can be tricky to see without stretching out your work, so you want to make sure you get your work nice and stretched out so you can see where all these little leftmost bars of the purl bumps are. Okay, so that's one side when I'm picking up. Now on the other side, when I stretch this one out, I have two columns of knit stitches. So I have the one all the way on this outside edge, so this is the one that makes the V shape all the way up this side. And if I stretch it, you can see that there's a bar in between that column of knit stitches and the next column of knit stitches. So I want to go right in between these two and pick up these little bars that are in between them. So that's what I'm picking up on either side and I'm just going to keep on going back and forth from one side to the other. So since my working yarn starts out over here on the right, I'm going to start out on the left. So I'm going to stretch out my work so I have that column of knit stitches pulled nice and far apart and I'm going to look for the lowermost bar here. So I skip that edge on the cast on edge bump and I'm going to go in one. So I have that bar in between the column, the two columns of knit stitches there. Now on the other side again I'm going to stretch it out so I get the knits and then I can see where those purl bumps are. I'm going to pick up the leftmost one of the purl bump, so now that I've gone across that first set of stitches, again I'm just going to keep on following the columns upwards. So here I'm going to stretch out my work again and find the next bar, pick that one up over here on the left hand side, then over here I'm going to find the leftmost bar of the next purl stitch. I 
again, stretch out my work so I'm finding those bars. Next one up. So that is what my seam looks like so far. So you can see it kind of blends in looking like a purl stitch. So now I'm gonna keep on going all the way up this edge. And as I go along, I wanna keep on making sure that my sock is staying lined up and that I didn't skip too many on one side or the other. So for example, when I'm finishing seaming up the cuff, I wanna make sure the two sides of the cuff line up. If they don't, I might have to skip forward or skip one bar on either side. That way I get them to line up. Then again, as I go down the foot of the sock, I wanna make sure that when I get all the way down here at the toe, the two sides are gonna keep on lining up. The last thing I wanna mention is that once you get past the ribbing, so whenever we're in the ribbing, on one side we're picking up part of a purl bump, and on the other side we're picking up in between the two knit stitches. But then once we get into this just plain stockinette portion, we're gonna be picking up in between two sets of knit stitches on both sides. So again, on this right side, you wanna find the first set of two knit stitches, so those two sets of Vs, and stretch out right in between them and pick up those bars. And if you're having trouble figuring out which ones are the edge stitches of knit stitches on anywhere along there, take one of your fingers and like bring it behind your work and make sure you roll your work all the way out. Once it's all the way out, then this outer edge all those V's are gonna be our columns of knit stitches. So to basically just grab both sides of those V's and pull. And then you're gonna see those, um, the bars that I'm talking about. Same thing goes for this ribbing down here. So kind of put your finger behind it and pull it all the way out. Then grab onto both sides of those V's and they look a little messy down the edges, but don't worry about that. And then just pull outwards. So now we're looking for that leftmost bar that's in that center purl stitch column. Same thing on the other side, roll it all the way out, pull it so that you figure out where that edge of V's are, and then stretch out your work to find those bars. It's definitely tricky to find them. Again, down here, I'm just gonna pinch it and stretch it. And there's some more bars. <laughs> so that's all there is to it. And if you're looking for more videos on this, what this seaming method is called mattress stitch. Thank you so much for joining me today for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to hit that red subscribe button. That way you stay up to date on all my future videos. Also here on the end screen, I'm gonna be putting up two recommended videos for you. Or again, if you're new to my 